Are you an agent struggling to understand real estate economics? Would you benefit from learning how top agents structure their businesses? Then you've come to the right place. And welcome to the Nerdy Agent Podcast, where we teach you the basic economic and business principles you need to thrive in today's real estate market. I am your host, Josh Pedersen. This is weird. With my brother, AJ. Should we just like do this? Hey, Luke, how's it going today? It's like the empty chair Clint Eastwood thing. Wasn't that what he did one time? He spoke to an empty chair. We just talked to him the whole time. That's great. Yeah, we. I, I, so for our daily Would You Rather today, my Would You Rather is Would You Rather Have Luke Here or Not Have Luke Here? I think here he really keeps it organized. Like we didn't have anything to talk about until this morning. And I feel like if we had Luke, we maybe would have had something to talk about. I would agree with you. And plus his intros are way better and I can't point and do the intro at the same time. So I just felt very uncomfortable. That's, that whole. And it is 936. Oh, and man. we normally start at This nine. one's, it's, him, it's, a, it's AJ's fault today. I this think is my fault. he was the one who was late. The benefit of, uh, well, not the benefit, but at least the nice thing is, is that even with Luke out, Today is a really good day for us to be recording because the CPI was released at 7.30 this morning. So we'll probably get this one out hopefully by Friday or maybe next week. But um, we are going to go through a CPI review because it's, it's probably the most commonly spoken about thing that we talk about here on the podcast uh, and go through that and just have a conversation about it real quick and and uh, leave you with the important pieces that you need to know to communicate with your clients. Excited? Yeah. yeah, great stuff. All right. Well, core inflation came in at 6.4% today. Uh, the expectation was 62 so slightly high. It's mediocre news. It's like not bad. It's not good. Um, but I guess after having good news each of the last few months where it had been getting better than expectations, having it come back higher than expectations was a little bit disappointing. Yeah, I'd say so for sure. And I mean, and we just talked about it. You saw the yields start to jump. Yep. Um, that 10 year number obviously impacting 30 year fixed mortgage rates for you agents out there. Um, but the stock market is up too. Yeah. It's, it's been mixed the results so far. So, uh, the market and so the 10 year treasury is as of our recording had moved up about 20 basis points. So that, that 10 year treasury yield does tend to move 10 to 20 basis points on certain pieces of news. We tend to see when we had really good news on inflation, it dropped what 50, 60 basis points in one day. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was all you don't like in the three threes. Right. For a little while there. I think it's probably what, three seven a day? It's at three seven five right now. It's up now thirty five basis points. So it is moving up more quickly. Um what can you give a little context, AJ, about like the reasons why the ten year treasury will go up if the CPI report comes back, you know, a little bit higher? How deep do we want to go into this? I mean we got, I mean, we got they, time. They, they all work together, right? So um as uh the CPI number comes in higher, that would signal to the Fed that maybe they need to have more rate hikes, um, which that directly impacts that ten year yield. So if they think that the rate hikes are gonna go further now than uh, they previously thought, then those treasury yields are going to start to rise. The bond market's going to react to it. Right. Yeah. I think the thing we talk about is that the bond market is driven by expectations of where the future is going. Right. So we'll hear more from uh, Powell in the near future. But when this, what, what, what the efforts that are being put in on the overnight rate, essentially what that's doing is trying to minimize inflation. So with inflation coming in a little bit higher and being at a point where we're saying, okay, it isn't technically under control yet, right? Uh, we have an audience in the background. Uh, that tends to signal that the efforts being taken may need to continue or even be ramped up to corral inflation. So with it being close to the expectations, it's not like they're going to have to overreact here. But the folks in the bond market are looking going, well, it's still not under control. So maybe the expectations might rise by 25 basis points or so. Yeah. What'll be interesting to see is what happens to those 30 year rates because they did actually go up about a half a point in the last uh, week or so. I'm The average rate ticked in just above 6.5 um, recently. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if that goes up, you know, six, seven, five, you start to get into that danger zone. Same of, range as last time. Yeah. Um, where it's pretty high. Uh, but I do know most, most of the bets still are that, that the rates, in, even in the near term are going to come down or stay the same. So we're seeing a lot of, um, those buy downs still be super attractive on those mortgage rates. Absolutely. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see too, cause we've seen, we've said this, that we thought the spring market would actually look pretty solid because the rates seemed to kind of stabilize. They went to seven and they came down to six. We thought they'd kind of stabilize around the six range. Now at AJ's point there, but six and a half, they, I would guess probably will go up again today. And so 
I'm hoping that this doesn't mean that the market's going to kind of go back into that. Well, I guess we'll hold off this year because the rates seem to keep creeping up on us. Um, but it will be interesting to watch as these rates kind of come into, into play here in the next few weeks. Agent tip for the day is whenever there's news, um, whether it be inflation or a jobs report or um, Jerome Powell speaking or whatever's happening, something that's going to impact the economy. Um, big tip that we talked to our team about is always call your go-to lender. If you don't have a go-to lender, get a go-to lender. If you have one, um, call them mid-morning on these kinds of days. The rate sheets usually come out mid-morning, 10, 11, 12 o'clock central time here. Um, and you're going to see what the impact of the what all is. of this is, right? Yep. And sometimes uh, when when the news is poor, like it was today, you're going to see a ton of hedging. So you're going to see the rates really go a lot higher than they probably should based on the data. Um, and if it's good, you can actually see it on the flip side. But most of the time, they're hedging the top side. So yep. um, rates don't snap back in one day super fast, um, but they do slowly tick down as the news gets better and better. When we have a bad day, they can go up a lot fast. Yep. So important to know. It is funny. It seems like the news comes out and the rate sheets tend to overreact one way or the other every mm-hmm. time. And then they kind of more normalize throughout the day. Mm-hmm. Um, but it will be important to continue to communicate that with your clients because if you have clients that are looking and they're at the top of their budget and the rates are going up, their budget may be changing or different things like that may be happening. So it's important to keep that stuff in, in communication with your clients. And the MBS coupons are traded in half point increments and they will house anything within um, three quarters of the top side of that rate, I believe it is. So that drives a ton of these buy down um, deals. I'm not going to get too crazy into the weeds on that, but that does matter as we start to get towards like six, seven, five, for instance, um, that 6.0 coupon comes back into play. Yep. Um, and, and it, you know, it may not have been previously in play. And then you, you start to understand how those investors are trading and why they're, you know, moving stuff the way they are. Yeah. And said more, I guess, simplistically, the way that buy downs work is essentially the lenders are trying to get as much of that money up front right away. Right. And so if they still believe, which is that what we've been hearing from lender partners is that rates are going to kind of start coming back down as the Fed gets to where they need to get to, and then maybe even continue just going backwards uh, in the near future, whether that's a year or two years, they're going to want to push for these buy downs because they know they have refinance risk at lower rates. If someone locks in at six, seven, five, and the market goes to five and a half in a year and a half, that's highly at risk of getting refinanced. So they'd rather have you pay down that rate to six right now so that you're not at risk of being refinanced in the near future. Take a little bit less in terms of the total amount, but more in terms of getting that money right away and redu- and, and increasing the longevity of that rate staying in place. Yeah. So I always say to agents or um, clients of mine, the lender doesn't just want the highest rate. They want the highest rate for the longest period of time. Yep. So that's why things move the way they do. Yep. Uh, just a couple other notes. Uh, food and energy really drove the numbers this month. So you probably felt that anywhere you go, but it is interesting to me strip those out. And this is probably why you're seeing the stock market go favorable, even though the 10 years also going up, you're getting mixed signals about the the report, right? Is it bad? Is it good? Um, food and energy are the big driver. So if you compare those, you strip those out, the number that kind of shows, uh, what inflation is without food and energy included. That came in at 5.6% above last year, which is actually the same number as we had for the report that came out in January for December, 2022. So we are seeing some signs that say like inflation is kind of stabilizing uh, compared to where it's been in prior months. Um, We're not still on this massive upswing. The efforts that the Fed is doing is working, are working. Uh, But until that number really, we get really positive news of that coming backwards, uh, we will continue to have some uncertainty. You know, crazy side note on the food topic. Yeah. Did you hear about the avocados from Mexico? Avocados. We just watched the Super Bowl commercial. We're singing along to it. I think I told you about this story, right? Apparently there's a cartel that took over the avocado market. Yeah. The drug cartels in Mexico have moved into a, I guess, a different product, which is avocados. So this issue is, so last year, the day before the Super Bowl, so that commercial, Avocados Mexico, always airs during the Super Bowl, they suspended Mexican avocados. The U.S. would not allow any Mexican avocados because a U.S. safety plan inspector had been either kidnapped or threatened by a drug cartel. Absolutely insane. Could you imagine being at the meeting? I'm, I mean, I imagine the cartel has the team meetings, right? And they're talking about things and they're like, we're moving into a new market, right, Haley? Yeah. We're moving into a new market. And like, you know, Joey hops up and is like, cocaine, we're doing cocaine now. And he's like, Ava. 
avocados, you guys. There's a lot of money in avocados. There probably is a lot of money in avocados. But the margins on methamphetamine have to be a lot higher for the drug cartel. But <laughs> avocados are legal. They are legal. This is true. I mean, but the way that they're making them money. is not legal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, for three dollars an avocado, I mean, think of how much avocado toast people are eating right I now. I don't think I bought three avocados the other day, and I don't think it was that bad. You probably didn't buy them from Mexico. No, such, I didn't. Such <laughs> a Gen Zer. I know, right? Avocados. If you get them at Lakewinds or Whole Foods, they're All probably three or four dollars yeah like. lifetime fitness you guys makes a banging avocado toast sourdough toasted little, how, did, how did we even get here everything but the bagel is there a food the place in best. lifetime fitness oh of course talk about vertical integrations we could get into that another time <laughs> but holy buckets anyways the avocados that that's probably impacting that that inflation number potentially potentially it could be increasing the and the price. eggs i've heard about the eggs i was <laughs> five dollar eggs i was at the grocery store the other day and i mean we go to an organic local grocery store so all their stuff is local how much do you think strawberries were for one thing of strawberries six dollars thirteen Nine ninety nine. I was like, I love me some strawberries, but I'm not paying ten dollars for a day of strawberries. My kids eat them so fast. Oh man, that's really wild. It's pretty wild. So, anyways, yeah, the food prices have gone up quite a bit. Uh, the avocado ban was lifted, so it lasted a short period of time. But we did see actually a spike in avocado pricing last year. It's come I mean, back it's down. tough optics for the United States to ban avocados. Like they're so popular. Guacamole. I mean, come on. I know. I just like that the Super Bowl's got an avocados from Mexico commercial, and you look at it like, and the cartels are doing this. You're like, we're host. They're the cartels to, are paying for Super Bowl commercials. They're trying to days? bring the brand back. I oh, guess. Also, quick marketing thing. I learned that a lot of the commercials can only say like playoff game or the big game because NFL trademark Super Bowl. That sounds like the NFL. This is great. They also call penalties that decide the games, oh. you know, <laughs> things like that. It's all rigged. It's all rigged. It's script. <laughs> all right. Well, I think that probably uh, wraps us for today. Do you want to go into a script or we probably are good? No, that's great. All right. Well, hope everyone enjoyed. If you didn't like this podcast, don't leave us a poor review or rating. Uh, just <laughs> get ready for Luke to be back next week. It will be awesome. And always... Be better. Be better.